Alrighty, welcome back to the Doom 3 commentary with me, Scully the Metalhead. Here with a bit of uh, editor lag, there's going to be an audio log coming up soon, so I'm going to shut up, and we are entering the comms transfer, so I'll let you listen to the log and then begin talking. Steve Hammer, service technician. Since Private Swenson wigged out, shot up that drink machine, then lit himself up with a plasma gun, we've all been a bit nervous. All of us in maintenance knew he was losing it. Finally, when that darn drink machine wouldn't accept his credits, he lost it and started swearing up and down. You had to laugh when that machine lit up, but before any of us could react, he fed himself enough plasma to power an office building. There wasn't enough head to clean up. Just vapor. It's a bad thing to happen to anyone. Anyway, I know with all the psych problems we've had lately, we need the additional security, but when the guards start going nuts, I don't know, all this extra weapons and ammunition. I mean, do we really need so much firepower laying around? Well, a couple of us decided to lock up all of the unsecured plasma rounds we could find. The code is 734. I think we'll all sleep a bit better tonight knowing it's locked up. And now I begin recording a second time because I feel as if the first version, well, it wasn't quite up to par, so... yeah. I'm hoping to god that this will turn out better, because the last time the recording was a little bit too quiet and, well, it was just relatively desynced. I think it might be because I had two program or two programs running at once, and that could possibly be it, but I got a cutscene, so shut up. Hey. Over here. We were hit. I don't know how much farther I can go. Here. Take the transmission card. Can't stay here. Isn't safe. We better move. No! So yeah, we're introduced to the wraiths a little bit too late. But um, oh fuck, I completely forgot. Oh yeah, that's what I was talking about. Why I'm recording this a second time. Uh yeah, the audio was quiet, and I felt like I could probably do a better job of the commentary because there were brief instances where I just had nothing to say. Again, they were like just period- like, I mean, even more than normal. Like, I had periodic times where I was just like, oh, so, uh, 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 uh. And, uh, that little hole there was actually where the Doom Marine for Doom the Lost Mission begins. Like, he's dragged through that, uh, vent by one of the demons, and that's uh, where his story begins. And it, which, again, is really weird, because you wonder why he was left alive. But I guess I can only assume he's dead, and we'll probably saving him for Dindins later? I don't know. Just a little theory I have, and today, we've got quite a bit to talk about. Hopefully, something of which I won't screw up, because, you know, my commentary is unreliable. Again, it's weird, for the past few parts, again, I've done noticeably better than I have in the, um, earliest parts of the Doom 3 commentary, like, before my return after the Matrix Path of Neo. But yeah, there are some serious, like, points where it's just absent without commentary. And granted, I suppose I could probably justify it as letting it sink in. But I don't know, it gets a little bit too congested, and it's still something I'm trying to figure out and trying to pace out a little bit better so that the information sinks in, but it's the good kind of information rather than just a jumbled uh, mess of words that just trip over themselves. Although then again, I could probably just attribute that to me being scatterbrained. And I completely skipped over the enemy, which was just recently introduced. Or have I? Yes, yes I have, but I'll talk about it again later. Assuming of course that we don't- actually no, it is gone I believe. Now yeah, I'll get to that enemy a little bit later because I missed it the first time. Plus it will give me more time to paddle commentary. Yay! I'm an old man. He <coughs> crap! I cannot. I cannot do Phalus's old man voice. Like I me, mean, man, I envy that. That, that. like that is some of the funniest shit I've ever seen. But then again, that is why I enjoy the Phalus Senpai. Well, then again, for those who know me, yes. Uh, Phalus and the movies was part of the inspiration for the Scully Review Show with the guy and the internet. Although I will say, Comms Transfer does have probably one of my favorite, uh, well not necessarily my favorite, but a, at least a neat little scare that's hidden away in uh, one little place. And I wouldn't even say necessarily a scare, it's more so- Okay, and there's a bit of lag. I apologize if there was a brief instance of silence, but there was some serious slowdown. Uh, so perhaps I should probably do something about that, I think it might have something to do with the fact that I have Audacity open at the same time. So by the time I get- okay. 
Things seem to be normal now, but by the time I get to the scare, I will probably uh, cut up recordings and uh, just hope that it plays out as normal. Okay, things are getting a little bit scary. I will stop here and be back in a moment. this as a taste of what is to come because again I'm gonna admit on the very late nights that I played this that actually kind of scared me again not quite significantly to the degree of that they took my baby scene but again it was one that caught me off guard because again while people do think that Doom 3 is all just monster closets and ambushes although I'll have a little bit more to say about that later again Doom 3 does have a few neat little moments in it and that's one of the reasons why I love this game compared to everybody other, or at least every other classic Doom fan who hates it. Because again, while it's not exactly action-packed, it is, it does pack a little something there. Anyway, we're crawling around in this little vent area. I believe there's another little scare in here as well, if I... No, I think that might be another section a little bit later, but... Yeah, there's another section I'm thinking of. Silly me. But, um, yeah, right now we're gonna head outside and... do some shit. I kind of forgot what I was going to say before. Yeah, it'll probably come back to me eventually, but... Yeah. Um, what happens at the end of this scene, I am not very proud of. It's, uh, it's a little embarrassing. You know, it's like you got your pants undone, and then there's the fly open. You do it in front of the bath, and then it's un outstanding. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it's kind of weird that we face the trites out here since we kind of just killed its mother, although I suppose they themselves could breed on their own. And there is perhaps a new vagary because, again, the creature does appear in uh, the Lost Mission or it was Resurrection of Evil at some point. Oh, I guess that's a possibility since it is a sequel, technically. Oh well. Now, just a word of warning, this next scene is going to be quite crushing. Am I right? Oh, the shame, oh, Ivan Hoiven. Uh, but yes. Probably not one of my better moments in this game, but hey. You know, you get distracted fighting, and then the elevator it decides to elevate fear to new levels, and, you know, it's gonna jump on the elevator because it's Doom Guy need a lift the, the next level. It's a video game pun. Okay, that's enough cross knight style drunken rambling. We gotta get back to the good shit with Doom 3. Actually, what's one weird thing, like, and again, I'm not sure if I brought it up earlier, but I really don't like calling the uh, workers, or at least the civilians of the UAC facility, zombies. Again, that's what they're officially called, or at least based on the wiki anyway, but I don't know. Zombie to me... A, it, a zombie to me kind of appeals more to biological warfare, and again, maybe that's because I've been playing or at least either biological warfare or magic, which I guess Doom could technically get away with since, you know, uh, demons and hell and shit. I don't know, but I think coining a term like the possessed or something or other would seem a little bit more in the spirit of, you know, hell and demons and everything, a lot more than zombies ever would. Because to me, a zombie is pretty much somebody who's either, you know, a shambling, slow-paced, sluggish a creature that is just interested in num-nums. And now it is time to bring up that commentary point that I had before and I didn't mention because I was busy talking about something else. And introducing, again, our new variants. And no, that's Councilor Swan and Campbell. Here we go. Welcome to the Kako Demon. Oh, uh, Kako Demon? I was never sure on how to pronounce that. But yeah, they have been reimagined for a modern audience. And by that I mean an audience that is over 10 years old now. But uh, yeah, these are the Coco Demons, reimagined monsters from the classic Doom, who, again, look significantly different from their classic Doom counterparts. I mean, for one thing, they look, well, they have tentacles, which the Doom wiki actually implies that they could initially walk, but again, given the fact that they had the ability to fly, their legs are just atrophied into nothing, which is quite interesting, well, at least from a biological standpoint, but also in the sense that, you know, these Coco Demons, weirdly enough, kind of remind me of the Polymorph. 
from the sci-fi television show Red Dwarf. <laughs> okay, nerdisms aside, yeah, I kind of like the uh, new imaginings of the Kako Demons. I'm pretty sure the Doom 2016 returned it to its initial form, but nevertheless, a Doom 3 variant was kind of cool. Well, that was kind of scary. The yellow eyes were like freaky, man. Ah, oh, jeez, I could use a drink of water. But I should record commentary, but I'm thirsty. Choices, choices. Mmm, <sighs> that was yummy to the tummy. Although, to be perfectly honest, there really isn't much to say around here, because I'm just gathering items. So, yeah, and this is also around about the point where the lulls came in. Not the lulls as in, like, a laugh out loud. I mean, lulls as in uh, periods where nothing's happening. <laughs> God damn, that actually takes on a different meaning today. Uh, but anyway, we're actually introduced to a new weapon. Huh. There is a guy, and there is a PDA. I hope nothing bad will happen here. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be anything bad. I guess I will grab the PDA now. Oh my god, this is a chainsaw demon. Eh? Eh? Well, the shotgun actually made short work of him. Um, but yeah, we get a chainsaw now. Well, as soon as we kill, uh, Victor Zaz over there. Yes, we now have a chainsaw! In all its chainsaw glory. <laughs> Ow. I'll show you... Chainsaw in body sound effect. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Actually, the chainsaw is actually one of the better melee weapons to use in the game. I don't know. There's just something so satisfying about carving a zomb- or Carving a zombie up. I should say. In fact, I can imagine if the, that if Doom 3 was made today, it would probably end up uh, abusing the physics engine of having, like, body parts hacked off. If Doom 2016 hasn't already done that because I haven't played it yet, so logs, shut up. This is the audio log of controller James Holiday, dated September 24th, 2145. The recent transport issues from Site 3 have caused the board to call a formal inquiry. We'll study weight limits and suggest better ways to provide protection for Site 3 artifacts. Our equipment... God damn it! PDAs, does anything work? Does it... Finish this later. So yeah, you'll be noticing that they seem to be mentioning uh, Excavation Site 3 an awful lot around here. Spoiler alert, that's one of the final levels of the game, and... Yeah, there was actually a lot of interesting things to talk about in Site 3. Uh, some of which I probably won't be actually able to cover in an entire video, but... You know, I'll do my best to explain it... Oh. Shit. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, but this also scared the shit out of me far more than the previous uh, little scare, because again, you know, playing this late at night, you know, especially without the flashlight on, again, you only have the ambient, you know, orange light detailing where to go, while hearing that dissonant scream. Again, it... It's... It's horror. It makes you wonder what the hell's going on. And, you know, I just love that kind of, I just love that kind of horror. Because it showcases PINKY! Well, it showcases him, but it also just, oh god, it, it just leads you in. It invites you to to see what is behind the, the veil. Oh. Okay, that wasn't quite supposed to happen. But anyway, back on that. Again, you know, a lot of these, and again, I know a lot of people are probably thinking, okay, these scares aren't really anything major, why are you making such a big stink about it, but honestly, I mean, for, for as relatively small as they are, it's the little moments that leave you wondering, you know, it's one of the, it's those moments that leave you with so many questions, and, you know, it creates intrigue and also creates a mystery. Oh god, and the lag is happening on this fucking commentary too, fuck. Okay, I hope to got the syncs up a little bit better, because again, the lag- and oh, one thing I probably forgot to mention way at the beginning is that, again, the lag uh, for the first recording, and, you know, compared to this one, is that it didn't sync up, because that's one of the reasons why I tried to record it again, because again, the commentary wasn't necessarily that bad, but there were lulls in places, but it's also for the fact that, you know, I couldn't quite sync it up properly because of that, the fact that it was lagging so much, and subsequently I just had to try and patch it up. And it's also raining outside right now. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, never enter that elevator, because there is a certain horror thing that happens in there. 
Although, as I <laughs> found out in the last commentary, I investigated it again because there is something creepy that happens in there. Again, once again, a relatively minor thing. The screen just turns red, and I believe a body f actually ends up falling out, but... Yeah. I don't think it worked that time because, well, you know. I kind of already activated it with my ass inside the elevator. So instead, we can just shoot more imps, because that's fun. Now, there is another thing about Doom 3 that I'll talk about a little bit later, or at least in terms of the BFG edition and the divide between that and the original. But first, here is a log, so I will now remain silent while you listen. Take it from here, guy. This is the audio log of Officer Ron Ridge, dated October 16, 2145. Recent transport tunnel accidents are causing major headaches for both supply and maintenance. Each accident cost is an estimated one to three hour delay in one or mostly time sensitive shipments. It's becoming evident that certain junctions need safety adjustments as well as recommitment to driving safety by all personnel. The Improta Com Center route has shown the biggest increase in accidents over the past six months. Safety signs and improved lighting are needed throughout the main junctions over the stretch of tunnels and paths. Absolutely, no recreational vehicle passage should be allowed during peak hours. All personnel should use monorail travel whenever possible to keep cargo shipments flowing smoothly. So, yeah, that was basically just a brief little explanation onto a little device. Okay, excuse me with that. But, uh, yeah, that basically explains a little device. Anyway, what I was getting at earlier, the divide between Doom 3 and the BFG edition, or at the very least, uh, where I tend to draw criticism with the big friendly giant edition, Pinky! Oh, it's not with a pinky demon, because I was in the original too. But, um, yeah. And again, if you haven't noticed already with the comparison, or at least with the uh, footage I've shown of the original, uh, they took my baby scene. Um, the thing of it is, is with the original Doom uh, 3, that is, again, I feel as if Doom 3, or at least the BFG edition, it attempted to remove a lot of the horror elements to not necessarily please classic Doom fans, because again, it is still relatively... It is still Doom 3 within the framework of it, but I guess the best example I can probably use for it is... Sonic Adventure DX for the Nintendo GameCube. Again, it's Sonic Adventure, it has all the same content, or for the most part, it has this. It has a lot of the same features in it. But at the same time, it added a few too many nuances and differences that kind of create like a divide, even if it is a very... Uh, aesthetical one. No, actually no, what? Cosmetic one, that's it. Although not to say that, because again, Doom 3 had a quite a few mechanics, like the flashlight thing. Um, a lot of the lighting was also much darker than it is here, in the uh, BFG edition, as you saw with the They Took My Baby scene. With, with a lot of the hall lights being your only way of seeing anything without the flashlight, because you had to alternate between it. Which, to me, emphasized the survival horror elements a lot more than, well, you know, you know the classic run and gun action, which the BFG edition tried to make a little bit more of, in the sense that, you know, there was a little bit more ammo for run and gun fun. <laughs> but also, I don't think that entirely worked so well. And again, not to bash on the, bi on the big friendly giant edition, because again, that is the version I'm showcasing. Well, mostly since it has all the uh, DLC, and I... W you know, the rain's really starting to piss me off, I... Uh, I'm so sorry. I hope, to, I hope to god you can stomach this, if you can hear it at all. But, um, yeah. In terms of the BFG edition, Again, it does have some rather nice features. Again, like, I will say that the flashlight being on the gun is a lot more handy than having to draw it out. But at the same time, it lose it does lose a bit of the horror elements, which, you know, it's kind of sad to see them gone. And I honestly think it does make Doom 3 the unique game that it is. But that being said, the BFG edition, if you plan to pick it up, which I think you can because it would probably go for quite cheap on the uh, PlayStation 3 and... I think possibly the Xbox 360, because again, not only with Doom 3, but it also comes with uh, Doom 1 and 2 as well. So again, it is, it is in your interest to buy the game if you're uh, interested in Doom. Although, I think a lot of people would tell you to get the PC version, because again, that's about as old school as you can get. Although, I still recommend that you could that you pick up the BFG edition, because again, it contains all these games, plus the DLC for Doom 3, which is uh, the Resurrection of Evil and Lost Mission. But still... I think that Doom 3, the BFG edition, probably should have just been a collection of all the games with Doom 3 unaltered and just kind of left it at that. I mean, granted, while these improvements are decent to some extent, I honestly think that they just should have left Doom 3 as is instead of just altering something, you know, to a very cosmetic degree. 
And again, honestly, I hold the same kind of standards towards Sonic Adventure as well, with how... Again, they, Sonic Adventure in itself, uh, or at least DX, it offered a few little improvements, like music transitioning between uh, areas whenever you transition from Station Square to the Mystic Ruins, and also in the sense that, you know... And also in the sense of like a few visuals here and there, but I think the Dreamcast version also had a lot more grit compared to the GameCube variant, and that's... You know, Sonic relies on grit, man. Like, it needs the grit to be cool. You know, despite everybody else's claim to the contrary, because Green Hill Zone is fun! But again, I'm getting off topic, so I shall return the... <laughs> topic to Doom. Although, that being said, it did fill up a lot of commentary, which is excellent. Because it means that there won't be any lull periods because I was busy talking about Sonic. But yeah, in relations to Doom, anyway, for the Big Friendly Giant Edition... Yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say on it. Well, it was kind of surprising, actually. I thought that I would have had more angriness. Oh, and uh, by the way, do not touch those railings, because again, as you can see, they are electrified, and you will be, uh, let's just say, positively electric when you find out that you were killed. And thank goodness the rain is dying down, because that means I don't have to... Okay, I say that and it builds up slightly again. It's like, oh, uh, Scully thinks we're ending, huh? Well, I'll show him, said nature. Anyway, one cool thing about this little transport thing, aside from the fact that, you know, a lot of people have decided to draw it right on it if the audio log was anything to go by, yeah, you can program its destination to head to these three places. Although you can also use it, you know, with the directional buttons and the uh, raising and lowering platform, which again, you know, you kind of need in order to get to that platform, which I completely skipped over earlier because I was busy bitching about the Big Friendly Giant Edition. But yeah, it's pretty interesting. There we go. Yeah, the weirdest thing is that you can also shoot down the Kaku Demon's uh, projectiles. Which, again, is something that I never found out you could do in the game up until uh, the point where... Hold on a sec. Something is happening. Yep, okay. Uh, my editor was just kind of screwing up there a little bit, but don't worry, recording seems to be okay, and what is this? It appears to be a... Bazak pack? Well, this thing looks kind of friendly. Oh, what's going on? I'm seeing red. You call me, I'm gonna kill you. You want it? You don't use a pistol. Yeah, basically what this is, is the modern variant of the Berserk pack. Basically, you turn into the One Punch Man, and can literally one punch things into submission. And it's, uh... Pretty fun thing to use. And I can't remember if you're invincible for the entire duration, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Anyway, almost to eventual we go. <laughs> uh oh. Oh shit. Okay. Now we're going to engage in fisticuffs, which is probably one of the most tense moments of the game, because, you know what, why not? We have to beat up Victor Zaz, because he's the Batman nemesis, and Doom Guys, and Batman L, apparently. Actually, speaking of Batman Arkham Asylum, I should probably get around to that game at some point, because, again, without it, we would I wouldn't have known about the majesty that is Victor Zaz, which, um, I'd have to argue is probably one of my favorite, uh, most underrated Batman villains. <laughs> you ought to come here, give it some, give it some, one, two, one, two, four. Yeah, we got him. Take that, bitch. But yeah, and in terms of Arkham Asylum, maybe I should get to that game at some point, like as a review or something. Eh, eh maybe later this Christmas. Anyway, now we'll be heading to the communications facility. That is, until we head outside. I'm just basically filling out the time, because, you know, gotta kill more Kako Demons, and we just saw uh, Councilor Swan and Campbell just entering that place, presumably to park the car and stop the signal from being sent. There is a lot of mystery surrounding that, and... Ooh, excuse me. Indigestion from noodles and... Uh, ooh, Pepsi. Anyway, I'm Scully, keep a new metal, and we will send that transmission which Sergeant Kelly ordered us to send because, I don't know, he's Sergeant Kelly. See you later.